Hello, everyone. My name is Robin Dolezal. Today is Wednesday, November 6th. With me, as always, is Dan Dental and Alex Pars. Together, we are with Ironwood Financial. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, tell me about your nights. Did you did you watch the election? Well, there election? was election. What election? <laughs> well, hold on, wait. Oh, I got seven million unanswered or unread texts. Oh, that election. <laughs> that election, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that's over because that was a lot of texts. Oh my lord. That was a lot. Uh, yeah, I am too. I am glad it's over. Now, did you guys have any rituals you did last night or no? Yeah, we actually, uh, we had a, 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 a couple over and we watched the election results and switched to all the different channels to hear all the different uh, point of views. It had some chili. It was delicious. Uh -huh. <laughs> and how, how late did you stay up there, Dano? Uh, funny that I know this exactly. 11.54. Okay. Pretty late for me. Yeah. Alex, did you or did you just go straight to bed? Got home from sports at 9, had dinner at uh, 9.30, bed at 10. Hmm. Well, I can't believe you both beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it, but I, I put the boys down, and I think I was down by 9 or 9.30, knowing that we probably wouldn't have results till this morning. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, so uh, we do have a result. Obviously, Donald Trump is the winner. And how is the market reacting today? So the market's pretty happy about it at the moment. Uh it's, I think, you know, there's there's a lot of question as to what the happiness is. And a lot of it might be just that there's a resolution. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm really shocked that we got an answer uh, this quickly. I was worried this was going to drag on for months. We still have the, the house to worry about, I guess. But yeah. um, I'm, I think the market going into the election, if you remember yesterday, was a pretty solid up day. And mm -hmm. that's before we knew anything. And so I don't think the market really cared uh, who the winner was uh, in the st in, for the stock market. Right. I think it does care, you know, which sectors are going to be impacted positively or negatively. But overall, I think this market was just happy to have a successful election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been talking about the market being typically pretty up in a, an election year. So and it clearly is happy this this morning, I know at, at one point the Dow was up about 1,200. I don't know what it's up today, but for right now. Up almost about 1,500 at this point. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's continuing to go up. Okay. Um, yeah, it is interesting because they've been talking about the election slash Santa Claus rally and the worry that that would go away if we didn't know who won the, the, the election and that we were sitting in, uh, you know, limbo. And reality is a perfect anecdote is. I have had two different phone calls today. One was uh, a person was so upset, desolate, disheveled that they want to go to cash. And I had another person call in who said, can I deposit some money and can you invest it immediately? Um, it's, Alex hit the nail on the head. We needed to have a resolution for half the population to be happy and put their money where their mouth is. And that's what we're seeing. Right. And the, and the good news is, I mean, you know, the the kind of the stance we have on a Trump presidency is we've seen Trump before. The current policies that are in place economically are primarily his. So we don't expect a lot of change coming from a new presidency, at least on a stock market front. And I have never heard anyone say Trump is against big business, which mm -hmm. the stock market is. So well, I would expect the stock market to be relatively pleased with him. So far, that seems to be the way they're reacting. And not to mention that, but we've got uh, the House and the Senate that look like they're also going to be red. So that should bode well for the market as well. Well, remember, we've talked about for years that gridlock was the best scenario because we didn't want anything to get passed. And that's in, it's not a very positive outlook on things, but Wall Street likes a known commodity, like to know what tax brackets are for corporate America and, and uh Reality is the sunset of the 2025 Tax Reform Act, uh, of the 2017 Tax Reform Act on December 31st of 2025. Well, that's a known commodity now. I mean, we know that the standard deduction is going to stay there. And for those people that don't itemize, that's probably a good thing. But I think the, the, the most accurate thing is, reality is most politicians are greedy and they want corporate earnings to go up. And we know kind of what the policy is going to be going forward, whether that pleases the person watching this or not. That's the reality of it. Sure. Yeah, I agree. And, and the reality is, 
this I think is kind of a one day rally, just a shift in the markets. And the reality is tomorrow it's back to the grind. It's back to, you know, what's the Fed doing? Um, because again, we don't expect big changes from Trump policies. Again, he put this stuff into place. He's not going to turn around and say, ah, I was stupid last time. Let's do something totally different. He'll make little tweaks if he can. Uh, but otherwise, it's all about the Fed. And the Fed is is poised to do another interest rate cut tomorrow, we hope, uh, and expect. And then another one at the end of December. So the data still supports uh, declining interest rates over the next year or so. And the stock market should be very happy with that. Right. So but if, Alex, I'm question for you. Sorry, Robin. Um, yeah. Seems like mortgage rates have bounced up. Seems like uh, the yield curve has flattened out, uh, which is interesting. That historically, that's a good thing. But right now, we're looking for an inverse yield curve, which means the market thinks that interest rates are going to go down. But those two factors, you still think Wall Street's priced in a, a rate decrease tomorrow? Well, Wall Street's definitely priced it in because the rate, a not a not rate decrease would mean the market would go down. So the market's gone up even further than before the uh, results of the election came out. But there's two possible reasons you're seeing what's happening in interest rates today. One is there's a lot of money going into the stock market today. Right. And where did it come from? Right. Okay. It came from the bond market. It came from gold. Okay. Gold and bonds are falling today. Why? Well, you got to sell something if you want to buy something else. There's not just money growing on trees. So that's one potential answer. This could be a very short term interest rate blip. You know, okay, we needed money to buy stocks. We bought our stocks. Now interest rates can settle back down. The other potential that people have been throwing around is that Trump's been promising tariffs, and that could lead to higher inflation, which could re lead to interest rates longer for, or higher for longer. Uh, whether that, you know, any time a politician makes a promise, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. So whether he does that or whether that's something he said uh, and doesn't fully intend to follow through on, we'll see. Um, but either way, I would expect interest rates to continue to fall just because the economy has been slowing. And that has been the goal of the high interest rates is reduce the speed of the economy. We, we've got unfilled jobs, which prior to COVID were at about seven and a half million and then peaked at 12 million and are back to seven and a half million. So not changing policy for the Fed would be the wrong move at this point. We don't want that number to continue to fall and the slope it's falling at is pretty steep. So they need to make a move. You know, I would be pretty surprised if we don't see a move tomorrow and then a continued, you know, continued moves if the data continues to present as it is. Well, in addition to unemployment or employment, uh, the uh, inflation numbers are very, very strong as well. So they went down to 2.1 percent and their, their goals, too. So that's going in the right direction as well. Right. Yeah. We we no longer have a one sided problem. Originally, it was inflation's off the charts and we're not at all worried about unemployment. Now the Fed has to consider both. Right. We have to consider unemployment and inflation. And the answer right now looks like unemployment could be a bigger worry. Yeah, so the Fed's meeting today and tomorrow, so we should know the answer, which it sounds like we're going to get a quarter point. And then we've got, uh, you know, December 18th is our next one. So another couple uh, couple cuts this year. Potentially, yeah. And and again, it's 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 not a question of, of if, it's more a question of when. I mean, the data really supports lower interest rates. And if they decide for some reason, you know, things are too hot right now because the market just jumped 59 points and decide to wait, Whatever, they'll do it next time. They'll do it time after that. The economy is slowing. So question, I mean, as if we as we watch the money supply flowing into the markets right now, it is kind of a Trump play right now. We're seeing energy, financials. Uh, we're seeing defense stocks. We're seeing China stocks get crushed. We're seeing small caps, mid caps, which is more of a P.E. ratio play than it is a Trump play. Um, so the two questions I have for either one of you, um, Alex, I imagine you'll tackle one of those, but... Uh, for the person out there that's saying, oh my goodness, I'm moving, I need to go to cash. What is the answer to that? And then what maneuvers are we taking as a portfolio stance with the change in administration, if any? I, I think the answer to the first question is pretty easy, which is, oh my gosh, look what happened in the election and look at the market reaction. Okay, the market reaction is not, the sky is falling. The market reaction is pretty darn happy right now. 
Okay, so for that sentiment to change overnight is not very likely. Yeah, tomorrow we could have a down day because this is the biggest update we've seen in a while. That's typically how things work. But the market's not saying, oh, the end of the world is here. They're saying, you know what? Now it's time for some of these sectors that haven't recovered from 2022 to start recovering. Okay, so because what we've talked about all year is what's been booming is the big tech, the NVIDIA, the, you know, the, the big tech companies, the Magnificent Seven, whatever you want to call them. And everyone else has been kind of left in the dust. You know, all the small caps, the mid caps you mentioned, those are up five and a half percent today. Okay, that's not that's because of expecting expectations for policy. So if policy, you know, if you think about this is, again, just a potential, but Biden's policy was a lot about green energy. Well, people who don't actually make anything don't pollute. Facebook, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Facebook produces, you know, digital whatever. And Caterpillar, they make smoke and debris and whatnots. Well, that's not good under a Biden administration. Maybe it is under a Trump administration. So there is room in the stock market for stuff that has been potentially artificially depressed to now say, all right, it's time for us to recover as well. So I know that you've made moves into, because I watch your trades, you've gone into small caps, mid caps, equal weighting, trying to not be so heavily weighted on the Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, NVIDIA, et cetera. Do you see making moves towards, uh, you know, more defense energy financials or more of a sector scenario, or is that, has that already been done by buying equal weight? We've, we've already done a lot of that. Um, we will make more moves as PE ratios change. Um, so we talk about those all the time. Smalls, mids, pretty much everything except for the Magnificent Seven has a relatively low PE ratio. So we are, you know, we are very optimistic that the rest of the market is going to catch back up. That doesn't mean big tech is going to do poorly. It just means we expect the other stuff to outpace it. So my last question then, I've noticed you've been, you've been extending our bond ladders further than we've been doing over the last, since really since 2008. Um, will you continue to do that? And what's the rationale behind going out to 2030, 2031? Uh, buying more at this point, not necessarily. I mean, it depends on what interest rates are and what the yield curve looks like. But that's a simple interest rate play, which is if we expect interest rates to drop, why not lock in higher rates for a longer period of time? Also, if interest rates do drop, those longer term uh, bonds are going to see more of a price increase uh, than shorter term ones. So those it's kind of a two part play, and it's all based on the wildly wide widely held expectation that the Fed's going to lower rates. Well, I know for me personally, it excites me to see those longer term bonds paying that north of five percent because it finally provides a little bit of safety blanket for the next downturn or next correction, which is obviously inevitable at some point. Yep. So outside the election of the Fed, I mean, is there anything else scary out there that we should keep our eyes on? No, I think the biggest hurdle of the year was getting a successful election result. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then now it's just waiting for the Fed to do its thing. I guess I have one last question, Alex. Does it matter what happens with the House? Uh, potentially. I mean, yes. I mean, there's there's the two arguments. One, if we have gridlock, the market's happy because we know what where to put our money, stability. You know, we can't have major changes. You know, Trump decides to suddenly subsidize X, Y, Z, you know, money would flow there. He can't do that if, you know, if uh, there's gridlock. The other, you know, potential outcome, I don't, I'm not going to say it's negative if the Senate or the House goes red, because Trump is known to be big business, right? I don't see him saying, I'm going to take this advantage of having all three pieces to take money away from rich people. That's true. <laughs> Makes sense. I mean, I think that could be a positive. It's It's got, you know, social repercussions potentially, but from a stock market perspective, that's what I understand of, of Trump is he's big business all the way. And that and that's the hard part is we have to remember that when we're talking, we're talking about one aspect of what's going on for economic policy, which is how can we make sure the stock market is is in our favor? But everything else that people care about is not something that we care about when it comes to stock market. Yeah. 
Well, gentlemen, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm glad this is over, at least the election, and I look forward to the rest of the year. I appreciate your time today. Look forward to seeing you guys on one of these again. Uh, folks, if you have any questions that we did not address today, you can reach us at 520-318-4600 or ironwoodfinancial.com. Uh, until then, we'll see you next time. Take care.